Welcome to Melbourne, Australia for this FIBA Basketball World Cup 2023 qualifier between Japan and Chinese Taipei. It doesn't get much bigger than this. Progression to the second qualification round is on the line here today for both of these teams. A win for Japan will be enough to secure their progression. However, for Chinese Taipei, they must win by six or more to be able to stake a claim to the second round here today. Here's the table as it stands. Australia sitting pretty at the top of the table without a loss to their names after five games. China also through to the second round with a 3-1 record, whilst Japan sits on a 1-4 record. Chinese Taipei on a 0-4 record. Our two games today, Japan, Chinese Taipei, and that will be followed by China versus Australia. There'll be one more game in this first round tomorrow by Chinese Taipei will take on China and that could be a huge game depending on how the game plays out here today between these two. Chinese Taipei clearly as we entered the qualifiers will have seen themselves as outsiders within Group B. They're ranked 69th in the world, 11th in Asia but they've put in some big performances. They've certainly grown as the qualifiers have progressed and they are within touching distance of making it through to that second qualifying round and keeping their World Cup dreams alive. Last time Chinese Taipei took on Japan, it was Japan that came away with a five-point win. That's why for Chinese Taipei it is critical that they keep their eye on the head-to-head -head result. They need to win by six or more. For Chinese Taipei, you have a feeling defense may be the key. They play a high pressing, pressure style of defense, forcing seven and a half steals a game across these qualifiers. And if they're able to do that, that could really help them today. As for Japan, well, they're in a different situation. Clearly, they already have their spot at the World Cup secured as they're one of the host nations for that World Cup. So, newly appointed coach Hovas has a different process to go through with regards to these qualifiers. This is preparation. This is then building towards hosting a World Cup. Coach Hovas hasn't quite found the right combination yet. His team has struggled. They've looked to rely heavily on the three-pointer. They've tried to play the game from distance. They've only shot 26% though from downtown, which has cost them. Interesting to see what game plan Ho Coach Hovas has today. We're now going to take a break in commentary for the national anthems of both teams. First, it will be Chinese Taipei, followed by Japan.
And the scene is set for a big game of international basketball. Here's the officiating crew that will be overseeing proceedings. Dallas Pickering, Buddy Marfan, and Jonah Garcia from New Zealand, Indonesia, and the Philippines, respectively. As they smile for the camera ahead of what should be a close game here today. As I say, last time these two teams met, there was only five points separating them. Chinese Taipei truly pushed Japan to the limits. And even more motivation to do so today with a spot in the second qualifying round up for grabs. And get slightly more complex and difficult to calculate if Chinese Taipei were to win by five because that would level the head to head. And we'd have to go to other factors which wouldn't be decided until Chinese Taipei's against game against China tomorrow. Here's the starting five for Chinese Taipei though. Lin, Tang, Wu, Lu and Chen. A strong five out to prove themselves. Plenty of big performances from Chinese Taipei so far in the qualifiers. Lin Bin Sheng averaging over 11 points a game as is Lu Chongxian. He has 12 points a game. They're the two offensive threats alongside the 22-year-old Tang Wei Shea who has 12 points as well. Coach Chow getting some notes down on the coach's board. Iconic piece of kit. How many winning plays has that board witnessed? How many big plays will it draw out here today in Melbourne? As we see Japan into their final preparations as well. And Japan certainly struggled in their last outing against Australia, going down 52-98 in that one. But if I'm honest, a huge amount of hand credit has to go to Australia. They put on an absolute show. And it's a starting five for Japan today. Evans, Sato, Nishida, Fuji, and Haramoto. Again, some big players there with big performances. Luke Evans averaging nearly a double-double, 11 points, 8.4 rebounds. Player coming off the bench to look out for Tominaga. Had a huge game against Australia, really found his form from outside. 18 points, shot 46% from downtown. Did the 21-year-old coach Hovas recently making the move across from head coach of the Japanese women's team after leading them to Olympic silver medal in Tokyo, as well as two gold medals at the Asia Cup. He's been in charge for a little under a year now and uh, still trying to find his feet and find the combination that will unlock the potential that this Japanese roster has. As we see the Tissot countdown to tip off, we're under a minute to go until tip off here in Melbourne, Australia. Let me take the opportunity to run through the progression, the permutations that we have here for Japan. Pretty straightforward, they win, they're through. However, if they lose by four or less, and Chinese Taipei lose tomorrow to China, then Japan will also qualify. So therefore, for Chinese Taipei, they must beat Japan by six or more today to secure progression to the second qualifying round today. If they lose by four or less, then they'll have to go and beat China tomorrow. Confused? Hopefully not. Like I say, if the game is a five-point Chinese Taipei win, we may need to get some mathematicians on the line, uh, and that progression won't be decided until tomorrow's game against China for Chinese Taipei. Moments away from the opening tip here in Melbourne. Quick reminder, if you want to stay up to date with everything to do with the World Cup, your best bet is to download the FIBA World Cup app. It's available on Android, iOS, completely free of charge. Has absolutely everything you could ever want on there. All the latest news and views, plenty of interviews and previews. And if you're the stats geek out there, you can follow along in real time with the box score as our game progresses here today. Plenty of pressure on the shoulders of both these rosters. Maybe more so for Chinese Taipei, because potentially their World Cup dreams could come to an end here today unless they get the right result. And we're underway here in Melbourne, Australia. 
FIBA 2023 World Cup qualifier between Japan and Chinese Taipei. Hanamoto with the first shot, nails the three. And what was I saying in the build-up? They struggled against Australia from downtown. And Hanamoto Teneketz straight away drains the three. That will no doubt settle some Japanese nerves and maybe jangle a few Chinese Taipei nerves. Shot goes up from range. Oh my goodness me, what a start to the game. Both teams finding form from outside straight away. Chen with the three there for Chinese Taipei. Fuji now slows it down, offered the lane, will step back but has to come out and it's stolen away, good quick hands by Luke. Floats inside and first lead of the game for Chinese Taipei. Nishida now, good ball movement. Shot goes up from outside, not the prettiest of shots and again it looks like Japan are going to lean heavily on the three point. Malou, no good. Rebound pulled down by Sato. And the pass from Evans is behind Nishida Yudai. So that will be a turnover. Coach Hovas, under a year into his reign as the men's head coach. So much success for the women's team. And a real basketball life for Coach Hovas. Great to catch up with him. It's good to talk about basketball with him, gives you real insight into his thoughts. He's certainly not a guarded coach. Happy to talk through exactly what their plans are. Shot goes up, no good. Evans with the rebound. Almost stolen away, and this is what we were talking about. Chinese Taipei look to try and get in the passing lanes and put some pressure on. Shot from the corner is no good. Evans with the rebound. Fuji will go again. Rebound. Strong put back from Sato. And Japan continue to focus on the outside. That's Sato, second rebound of the game as he ties things up at five apiece. Lin hands it off. Nice hesitation, dribble knocked away by Evans though. The handle was good, but Evans, as the rim protector, did his job. And again, Japan just have no inside game. And if I'm Coach Hovas, that's a concern. They're taking very early, low percentage opportunities. They need to use the shot clock more, build an offense, get the ball inside, create some space on the outside if they do. Stolen away, good hands from Luke, and the shot is good for Tang. Tang, one of the key pieces for Chinese Taipei, just 22 years of age, but scored 12 points against China in their last game. Evans, wide open, three, inside and out. Adamoto with the rebound, gets the score. Play by Haramoto, that's five points for him. Already scored more than he's averaged across the three qualifiers he's played in before today's game. Oh, and the shot is good for Lin Bin Shen. Haramoto for three. Again. And I'm not sure if the plan for Japan today is keep putting the shots up because they should have some dominance in the paint. As Chinese Taipei only have one player above two meters tall, that is Sun Zhu Yao, who is 207. Shot goes up and is short again. Japan with another offensive rebound though. And that's what's keeping them in the game at the moment. The fact that they're getting so many second chance opportunities. Rejected. Good follow on the play there from Chen. Didn't lose track of it. 
stayed with it. Tang now, long two. Hits the jump for the go. And Chinese Taipei extend their lead out to four. Into the corner, Haramoto. Nails the jumper from the corner. Haramoto has come to play. He's up to eight points personal already. His best performance of the qualifiers. Steps out of bounds. Liu Chen Xian losing uh, track of where he was on the floor. Here's the long two from Tang. Here's the corner pocket three, overlooked by Coach Hovas from Hanemoto. Double screen now set to try and bring Tominaga into the game. He pulls up, puts the three up, no good. Rebound for Lu. As expected, the game is close. Over five minutes gone in the first quarter now as this quarter zips by. Oh, rejected. Good hands by Evans. Two blocks for him already. Little main Chinese Taipei ball. And this is the job that Evans does for Japan. Really provides that backup, enables players to play a little bit tighter, more straight on defense on the perimeter. They trust that Evans is going to step across and help them if they get beaten on the dribble. Inside, little right hand floater, no good. Good rebound, ripped down in the end by Toz Kai. Nice find, Tominaga gets the score and gives Japan the lead. Both teams running at pace. No one looking to slow the game down, that's for sure. First six minutes of this game have absolutely flown by. Foul's going to be called. Unbelievably, only the second foul of the quarter. That one whistled on Chen Wu Wei. There's the pass inside to Tommy Naga. Does a good job. We have a little flex. The 21-year-old Tommy Naga Kaise had a phenomenal game against Australia. Really, the only thing to write home about from the Japanese performance. Had 18 points and shot 46% from downtown in that one. He's raining the threes down on the Boomers. One, two, again. No good this time for Tang. And Naga, long three. That one looked like it was down, but it squirts back out. Nice little hesitation. That one goes inside to Sun, but he's locked out. And Chen is going to be fouled. First Japanese foul of the game. That one's called on Yoshi Hirataka. Just a split second too late with the slide. Bought the fake a bit hard. Sideline possession for Chinese Taipei. Coach Chow just talking through the finer points with Tang as he heads to the bench. Into the game comes Lin. Chen drives inside, goes for the scoop shot. Again, looked like it was going to roll, but the rims have not been friendly so far for either team. And OU to Tommy Naga. And OU for three. Drops that one. Chinese Taipei will need to pick up their perimeter defense, relying on Japan having another bad night from the uh, three-point line is not going to cut it here today. Japan's lead now a game high four for them. Beautiful ball movement. That one's kicked out, but the three-point shot is short from Chang Chenya.
Holes now, trying to slow things down. Shot clock at eight. Looks for the pick and roll. Nothing there. He's going to fight his way in. They're going to have to get something away. They get it away and they get the three. Once again, Tommy Naga drains a buzzer beating three. And with that, increases Japan's lead to seven and forces Coach Chow into a timeout. No doubt looking to rearrange that perimeter defense. There's over two minutes to play in the first quarter. Let's jump into this Chinese Taipei huddle. And there's Tominaga picking up where he left off against Australia. He's already up to five points. And Japan aren't highly effective at the moment from three point, but they've got a lot of points from it, if that makes sense. They're four from 13, so that's only 31%. But they have scored 12 of their 18 points from downtown. Almost stolen away. Good energy there from Yoshi. Sun trying to fight his way. Good use of the pivot. Tominaga getting in amongst the trees to try and grab the rebound. Al is going to be called off the ball on Lin. There's the foul as Yoshi tries to lock up in the low post and Lin called for the foul. Aminaga goes inside, draws the foul. Might have uh, been better going with the right hand rather than the left on that one. Uses the pick and roll well. Fake pass creates the tiniest amount of space for him to draw the foul from Sun. First free throw to go as Coach Hovas will be a little bit happier and a little bit more relaxed with how Japan have started this game compared to how they played against Australia, particularly on the offensive end. Japan will have just 52 points against Australia. And they've notched up 20 points here in the first eight and a half minutes. They're only averaging 66 points a game in these qualifiers while shipping 87 at the other end of the floor. So plenty of work to be done for Coach Hovas on both ends of the floor, but signs of progression here today. Skips inside, looks to scoop it up, no good. And that one's brought down and away. Tommy Naga. Oh, that's a smart play. Doesn't go up the near side. Risks being blocked, goes up the uh, reverse side and uses the ring for some protection. So impressed with Tommy Naga Kaisei so far here across this qualification window. That one's no good. Rebound pulled down by Chang Chen Ya. And a foul's going to be called. Just the second foul of the quarter for Japan. Be a baseline ball for Chinese Taipei. Chang called for the foul. Double change there for Chinese Taipei. As we 
see Lynn head out. Oh, and the shot is good from Lin Bing Sheng. No one's kicked out. Tominaga with the fake gets the shot away. Now's the three again. Throws the three. To the sky, shot goes up, end of the first quarter, no good. And once again, Tominaga is ruling the roost. 12 points in that first quarter, just six minutes of play, and he's helped Japan establish a 25-14 lead over Chinese Taipei at the end of the first quarter. Here are the shooting statistics from that first quarter. And uh, absolutely blistering from Japan. Five threes in that first quarter. Chinese Taipei struggling to get some efficiency on the offensive end and struggling to stop Japan on the defensive end. They need to correct things pretty quickly or their World Cup dreams are going to fade. Here are some of the best plays from that first quarter of action. And after a relatively slow start for Japan, they certainly found the boosters within that quarter. Chinese Taipei competing with them well early on. But it wasn't before very long that Japan started to take control. Five offensive rebounds in that first quarter certainly helped them. And also shooting five from 14 from downtown gave them added bonus as well. Two players really though behind the damage that Japan have done. Two players combining for 20 points. Tomonaga with 12 points. Hadamoto with eight. That really has been the two keys for Japan in this game. As for Chinese Taipei, their leading scorer is Lin Bin Sheng. He has five points. Just behind him with four is Tang Wei Che with four points and two rebounds. Plenty of work for Coach Chow to do in this first quarter. Hubble, remember their World Cup dreams are on the line. And there's a QR code for Courtside 1891. That is the app to get if you want access to tons of schedules and stats from leagues across the world, including a ton of live streams as well. Certainly worth a subscription, that's for sure. Slightly pensive look from Coach Chow standing on the sidelines for Chinese Taipei. Second quarter action underway here in Melbourne, Australia. FIBA 2023 World Cup qualifier between Japan and Chinese Taipei. Japan lead by 11 at the end of the first quarter. And the first shot attempt is pretty short from Chinese Taipei. Sato now comes back. Shot goes up, no good. Sixth offensive rebound of the game for Japan. It's knocked out by Lu. So Japan will hold on to possession. All inbounded, out to the corner, Suda, no good, rebound for Lin. Chang, corner pocket, that one's off target as well, good offensive rebound though by Tang Wei Shea. Shot has to go up as the shot clock was running down. And the problem Chinese Taipei at the moment is their offense just isn't creating good opportunities. 
being forced into taking low percentage chances. And we have to credit Japan with good hustle on the defensive end for that. Oh, lovely pass inside, and that slicker movement, that more precise angles to the cuts from Chinese Taipei will pay dividends this time. Lin Bingsheng getting the score. Luke Evans now kicks it out. Good perimeter ball movement. The three is open, but is no good. Interesting lob pass. And when I say interesting, I mean pretty awful. Tominaga hands it off. And Tominaga with the assist. Probably could have got the score himself. But selfless as he hands it off to Suda. Offensive foul is going to be called on Chang. As Haramoto knocked it away. Chang just made contact with him in the face. Let's uh, have a look at a replay of this last possession. Yeah, just pushed him in the throat. Haramoto certainly made the most of it, but he drew the foul. It was a foul. Another foul called. Quick succession. Kawamura drawing that one. Kawamura now in possession. Long pass to Suda. Japan certainly have patience here on the offensive end. Shot clock down to six though. That one's off the fingertips of Lou. Will remain Japanese ball. Kawamura looking to inbound. It does so to Haramoto. Shot clock at four. Haramoto puts a prayer up and his prayers weren't answered that time. Baseline ball for Chinese Taipei, and that's much more of the defensive intensity they're going to need. They've certainly turned out in this second quarter with a bit more energy on the defensive end, limiting Japan to just two points in the first three minutes of action. Suda for three. Off the back of the iron and away. Haramoto saves it. Wonderful play. Good hustle. Into the corner. Nails the three. Sato. Drops the three, takes his personal tally up to five. Alamura picking up his first assist of the game. Backdoor pass. And Chinese Taipei just uh, feeling the pressure right now. Inside, easy score for Luke Evans. And I think Chinese Taipei, yep, they're going to call the timeout. As Japan just starting to find their form again, plenty of smiles on the Japanese bench. And uh, the body language tells you a lot there as Chinese Taipei head over to their huddle. 6.31 to play in this first half. Japan 32, Chinese Taipei 16. Let's listen to their huddle. Not quite panic stations yet for Coach Chow and Chinese Taipei. Just a reminder, though, a loss today ends their World Cup dreams. That will see them leave the qualification process here in the first round. They need to come away with the win. 
to keep their dreams alive. And a win by six or more pushes them through to the second qualifying round. Japan at the moment seems to be getting the job done. Certainly in the driver's seat for this game so far. Wu loses control and throws it out of bounds awkwardly. And they did everything they needed to do there, Chinese Taipei, but the finish just wasn't quite there. Quick change of ball as there's sweat on the last one. Kamamura now looking to bring it up, hands it off to Luke Evans, who will take it up over the half. Evans for three, off right, and as much as Japan can credit their three-point shooting with their lead here today, it's continued to not be the best component of their game, just shooting 32%. As Chinese Taipei turn the ball over again, six from 19 from downtown, Haramoto having a good game, two from three. Sato, nothing to write home about, one from five for him. Kawamura to Haremoto. Good patience again from Japan. Nice drive inside. That little pump was enough to get him through the crowd. Sato Takuma takes his tally to seven. He's just been averaging five points a game in the qualifiers. Long two. Rattles it home and Tang is certainly one of the players that can lead Chinese Taipei back into this game. Six points for him alongside four rebounds. Foul's going to be called on Ling Beng Sheng. This is Tang stepping in for that jumper in the last possession for Chinese Taipei. Baseline ball now. For Japan. Kawamura into Harimoto. He's going to look to use his size advantage. Hooking foul, surely. Yep, good call by the officials. Absolutely the right call. Just eased his defender out the way by hooking his elbow around. That's literally textbook. Stick that in the uh, official's coaching manual. Couldn't be clearer if he tried. Lin now into the cross to Chen. A bit more patience this time from Chinese Taipei, but their offense is so static. Into the hands of Wu. Oh, what a rebound by Tang. Gonna draw the foul. That's just heart and hustle from Tang to get that one. Completely outnumbered in the paint. Have a look at how hard he works to get this rebound. Three Japanese players going up for it. Tang on his own. Still comes down with it. Goes strong towards the foul. As Sato will head to the bench. Into the game comes Inouye. Aramoto will come out of the game as well as Tominaga comes back in. Tang at the line for free throws. It's the first to roll, clipping the front of the iron. Yeah, Tang had 12 points against China. 22 year old, one of those bright sparks for a potentially golden Chinese Taipei era. Several young players in the roster again here today for Chinese Taipei. As you know, you steps out of bounds. You see it so often. Players not understanding how close to the sidelines they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
can almost feel the coaches cringe when that call gets made because such an easy one to avoid. Stolen away again, out at the races, and an easy layup for Nishida. Again, you can see how static the Chinese Taipei offense is. There's only movement on ball, there's no movement off ball. Oh, and the prayer is answered for Lin Bin Sheng. Throws it off the glass as the shot clock was expiring, gets the score, Tommy Naga. Once again with another score. And Japan's lead stays at 14. Tang comes up, grabs his own rebound. Shot is no good again. That one clips the top, so will be a Japanese ball on the sideline. Let's have a look at this play. Lin, absolutely with the Hail Mary to finish it off. Timeout's been called, sorry, in fact, no, just double change for Chinese Taipei as Lin heads to the bench. As does Sun, Yu and Chen come into the action. Luke Evans now hands it off. Tommy Naga is tied up. Good defense. Tank rejected but fouled. Evans doesn't think it was a foul. The officials say it was. Evans looking for his third block of the game there. Let's have a look. Tough to see from that camera angle. This one might help. Let's see where it is. Yeah, there's body contact. I don't think it's particularly about the arms. I think it's Luke Evans, hip and lower body, making contact with the player in the air. So Tang will head back to the free throw line. Interesting free throw style. Has that hesitation at the top of his form. get the second to go that leaves him at nine points personal and the Japanese lead at 15 make that 17 as Luke Evans gets out in the lane and gets the score strong pass by Kawamura Yu hands it off to Chen good ball movement from Chinese Taipei Thrown away again, though, and Chinese Taipei really not protecting their possession. Tommy Naga, no good. Ninth turnover of the game that was for Chinese Taipei. Strong move inside. That's off target. Foul is going to be called, though, on Tang Wei Xie. That pushes. Chinese Taipei into the penalty. And Chang picks up his first foul. I mean, Naga heads to the bench and another big performance from Tommy Naga. Oh, in fact, sorry, Karamura, that is. You know, you hands it off to Toes. Shot goes up from Tommy Naga, no good. Towers with the rebound. You just feel almost serenity from the Japanese team. They know they're in control of this game. And it's going to take a lot to knock them off their stride. Good defense like that from Chinese Taipei is the place to start. Tang, skip pass to Chen. Nice pass inside, and they get it to go. And this is the thing that's slightly frustrating about the Chinese Taipei team. They clearly, when they get together as a team on the offensive end, play some really good basketball. But often their offense is quite stagnant and therefore lacks the creativity to get high percentage opportunities. And you now goes inside. And again, everyone off the ball is just standing there watching it happen. Shot clock expiring. 
Yu goes in, rejected though by Inouye, gets his own rebound and eventually gets the score. Persistence certainly pays off in that instance. Japan's lead trimmed to 13, 37.3 seconds remaining in the first half and coach Hovas will call the timeout as he wants to talk things over. Let's jump into this Japanese huddle, hear what he has to say. Interesting time out there from Coach Hovas, looking to get the two for one, using the remaining clock to its fullest. Nearly 40 seconds on the clock, so his team need to go early. They'll need to try and get an opportunity in the first, I'd say realistically, yeah, five to ten seconds of, in fact, less than that. He's probably looking five to seven seconds to get the shot away so that they will regain possession and get another opportunity before the half-time break. Smart coaching by Coach Hovas. He'll be happy how his team have played so far. So they're going to need to move the ball quickly here. Looking for the shooters in the corner, I think. Inside, and that's the two for one he was looking for. They'll get another four or five seconds to play with. And Yu brings it up over the half. Great offense by Japan. Listen to the coach, executed well. Shot goes up, comes up short. Japan will come back the other way. They've got time. That's a long shot, no good. And that will be the halftime buzzer here in Melbourne in this World Cup qualifier between Japan and Chinese Taipei. A strong first half of action sees Japan in the lead 42 27 over Chinese Taipei. Now your leading scorers from the first half. Unfortunately, that's the wrong graphic. We'll be back with the right graphic shortly, no doubt. As the teams head to the locker room and plenty to talk about for Coach Chow and Tiny Chinese Taipei. They've had a tough first half of action, being limited to just 27 points. Poor performance from downtown can certainly be attributed to that, whilst Japan are getting the job done. 11 assists for their 42 points. That's a good ratio. They're winning the rebounding battle. They've protected the ball well. The leading scorer is once again Tominaga, 14 points. Haramoto with eight and Sato with seven. As Japan are in control. Here are some of the highlight plays from that first half of action. And plenty of highlight plays for us to look through. Japan have played some beautiful basketball on the offensive end particularly in that first quarter, opening up an 11-point lead and posting 25 points in that first quarter. But for Japan, it's their defensive effort that has probably paid most dividends because they also held Chinese Taipei to just 13 points in that second quarter. Plenty of work still ahead, though. 20 minutes to play, remember. Progression to the second qualifying round is at stake for Chinese Taipei. Their World Cup dreams hang by a thread right now. They need to win today's game by six or more to secure their progression. If they win by four or less, then they'll have to go and win tomorrow against China. For Japan, it's a pretty straightforward equation. Win, and they're through to the next round. If they lose, by more than five, they're out. If they lose by four or less, then they will be uh, cheering on China tomorrow, that's for sure. For Japan, their leading scorer is Tominaga. 14 points, two from seven for downtown for him. 
Haramoto also having a good game with eight points, as is Sato, who has seven. For Chinese Taipei, their leading scorer is Tang with nine points. Also has six rebounds, so he's well on the way to a double-double. Also on nine points is Lin Bin Sheng, who has nine points and one from one from outside. Also three rebounds to his name as well. One of the big concerns for Coach Chow will be how many turnovers they've had in that first half. Nine turnovers for Chinese Taipei. They'll certainly have to treasure their possession a little bit more in the second half if they're going to come away with the win. Still plenty of action ahead of us here, though, in Melbourne. It certainly provided a wonderful backdrop to what has been a great qualification window so far. But at the halfway stage here in Melbourne is Japan 42, Chinese Taipei 27. Who will you become when the moment arrives and you're carrying the expectations of an entire nation, representing your people and their dreams, the colorful faces in the streets, the screaming fans in the stands, it's time to make your move. All eyes on you, all hope, all heart. Because when you win, you win for all. The three is thrown from miles out. That was a three just a second ago from Eilun. Sokert pulls up for the three and hits and one. Chow Chi Wei, no look pass, far side, Sun Ming Hoi for three, misses Zhou Chi, offensive rebound, and the stick back with authority. Chisholm looking for support. Good movement. Chisholm will slam. Oh. What an offensive possession that was. Blanchard will drive the baseline. Oh, just a little too congested, but Blanchard works hard to get it back. Della Dover, no good with the three. Oh, that is a monster putback by Jackson White. Two and a half to go. Another beautiful turnover, and uh, Zhou Chi goes all the way and throws it down with two hands. And China have completely taken control of this game. Oh, rejected by Maker. They're going to go at him again, and again, back to back blocks by Thon Maker, not in his house. Quick hands, and here he is, Yusuf Hayat. Down the middle with the flush, two hands. Welcome to the game, young man. Welcome to the senior stage. Well, here we go now, transition. Oh my goodness gracious, and he flexes the guns. Well, I just saw Caddy fly in the sky. Nartai going again. Oh my goodness me! Nartai with back-to-back -back jams and he likes it as much as we do.
Welcome back to Melbourne, Australia for this 2023 FIBA World Cup qualifier between Japan and Chinese Taipei at the halfway stage. It's Japan 42, Chinese Taipei 27. Chinese Taipei may have struggled on the offensive end, but Lin has certainly done his job so far. 100% from the field, has nine points to his name. Doing a great job to keep his team in it and keep his team's World Cup dreams alive. Remember, for Chinese Taipei, if they lose by six or more, their World Cup campaign comes to an end in this first qualification window. Let's now jump across and look at the leading scorer for Japan, Kominaga there, flexing the guns. And uh, once again, he has come out and really lit things up. 14 points, 5 from 11 from the field. Really doing a good job for Japan. Once again, a 22-year-old just really showing how versatile his game is. And Japan have done a good job, full stop. Their offense has looked a lot slicker here today against Chinese Taipei. And that's enabled them to get to 42 points. But it's at the defensive end that Japan have done their best work, holding Chinese Taipei to just 14 points in the first quarter, 13 points in the second quarter. And at one stage, Japan's lead was out to 18 points, trimmed back to 15 now. But uh, Chinese Taipei, not a mountain to climb, you wouldn't quite say in the second half, but certainly a large hill. 15 points down against a full flow Japanese team it is a tough ask but they definitely have the talent within their roster to get that job done be interesting to see which of their players steps up in the second half Lin Bin Sheng obviously leading the score with nine also on nine points is Tang he has six rebounds as well so you imagine he's going to end the game with a double double the way he's going as for Japan yes Tominaga's on 14 points but Hanamoto has had a good game as well as he has eight points to his name. Japan are the first team back on the floor to get ready for the second half. A little under five minutes to go until we start the second half of action. And let me take the opportunity to run through these permutations for you. So for Japan, the first one is pretty straightforward. A win today and they are through to the second qualification round. Now, if they lose by four or less, their hopes of progressing are still alive, but they'll have to wait to see what the result is for Chinese Taipei against China tomorrow. So they're the permutations. Don't get me started with what happens if it's a five point win for Chinese Taipei. That gets into some serious maths and will have to wait for the result of Chinese Taipei's game against China tomorrow. So, Tominaga, a phenomenal game so far. Well, a phenomenal weekend, let's be honest. Currently at the University of Nebraska. And that tells you how exciting the future is. 14 points, two from seven from downtown, three from four from two point range. Doing a great job so far for his team, really sparks the offense, provides real impetus and creativity to this Japanese team. And they seem to lean on him more and more. I think he truly could be a global superstar for this team. But in the front court, Luke Evans is also putting in a shift here today. He has four points, three rebounds and a block to his name. I question that stat. I've seen at least two blocks from Luke Evans and a third one and he almost got away. And now, just a few minutes from the start, under three minutes now from the start of the second half. Interestingly, Chinese Taipei yet to come to the floor. Sometimes a good thing, sometimes a bad thing. It certainly means that Coach Chow is taking as much time as he can to get his messages across to his team in that locker room in the halftime break. And I'm sure plenty of messages are needed, particularly on the offensive end for Chinese Taipei. Defense, not brilliant, but not bad. 
but offense they really struggle being held to just 27 points they were averaging 65 points a game so they're below their average but their defense is playing better than their average so you would suggest that the focus for Chinese Taipei was how are they going to increase their offensive output for me the big thing that they need to work on is their movement, their fluidity on the offensive end at the moment. Anyone off ball is just standing. Yes, they're spacing the floor, but they're not making any cuts. They're not being dynamic with how they're playing the game. They're not creating enough difficulties for the Japanese defense to have to deal with. They need to be uh, more proactive. They need to be the ones instigating some of the changes in the game for Japan. They'll quite happily carry on exactly as it has been so we'll uh, have to wait to see a little over 90 seconds before the start of the second half and we're starting to see some chinese thai players emerge from the locker room they're not going to get much of a a warm-up before the second half it looks like they might just actually come just straight back into the game without any warm-up whatsoever which is a brave move they got leaders statistically for them. Lin, nine points. Tang with six rebounds. And maybe that's a telling tale. Chang with one assist. That shows that at the moment their offense isn't leaning on the team ethos at all. And that might be an area that they look to work on in the second half. Under a minute to go. Just a reminder, if you want to stay up to date with everything to do with the World Cup, your best bet is to download the official FIBA World Cup app, available on iOS and Android, completely free of charge. Gives you everything you need. And you can follow our game today on the box score in real time. And step to uh, the game as it develops here in Melbourne. Coach Chow continues to get some messages across to his team. Often you see teams that don't have any warm-up come out quite slowly in the second half. And Chinese Taipei certainly can't afford that. There's the QR code if you want to download the app. Get your phones out, scan that code. It'll take you to where you need to be. And five, four. Japan are back on the floor. Fuji, Evans, Haramoto, and Sato, and Inoyu on the floor. Chinese Taipei now back and ready to go. Second half action underway here in Melbourne, Australia. FIBA World Cup qualifier between Japan and Chinese Taipei at the halfway stage. Japan lead this one 42 to 27. Evans barrels his way to the bucket, draws the foul. Let's have a look at the replay. Yeah, not quite stationary. Did get his feet outside. Yes, that left leg just makes a final step from Tang. Evans will head straight to the free throw line as we start this second half. Not the best free throw shooter, Evans. Prior to today's game, 53%. But he does like playing against Chinese Taipei. Had a double-double in the last meeting. 17 points, 12 rebounds, as well as four assists. And on that condemnation of his free throw shooting percentage, he uh, shoots perfect, including one that didn't even look like it touched the net on that second attempt. He's up to six points personal now. Japan's lead back out to 17. Better movement now for Chinese Taipei in this offense. Mm, but it's thrown away, their 10th turnover of the game. Not the way they would have wanted to start the second half. Apologies from Sun. Evans coming up for the screen. Nishida not using it. 
Shot clock to five. Fuji trying to shake to create some space. Lovely backdoor cut and a beautiful no-look pass. And Luke Evans with four quick points here in the second half. Tang now. And his Taipei offense looks more fluid, that's for sure. Yu hands it off. Off jumper. He's no good. Haramoto hands it off to Nishida. Into Evans. He's going to go to work. Spins the baseline. Has it stolen away. The spin move was easily read by Chinese Taipei in the end. Foul's going to be called as Sun plows his way to the basket hard. Nice pass off the feed from Lou. Drew the double team Lou, and that created the space for Sun to work with. See if he can reduce this lead for Japan. This is the first of his two free throws. Yet to trouble the scorers in today's game, Sun. Averaging eight points a game in the qualifiers. Played that one game, though, so far. Evans hands it off. Sato. No good. Evans fighting hard for the rebound. Can only knock it out of bounds. A little wry smile on his face as he runs back down the floor. Two minutes gone here. In the third quarter, Chinese Taipei yet to score. Sun now in the low post, shot clock down to four, going up against Evans. Travel's going to be called on Sun. Another turnover for Chinese Taipei. Saying he was pushed. Just looked like good post defense from where I am. Fuji almost throws it away. And hold on to possession though. Evans wide open for three. Comes up short. Foul's going to be called on Sato as he pushes in. Japan are going to apply a little full court pressure here. Maybe just to slow things down a little bit rather than to try and steal the ball. Almost stolen away. Wu regains possession. A little running float is no good. It's off the hands of Sun. And again, Chinese Taipei just really struggling in the offensive end. They don't really seem to have a, a team ethos at the moment or a team structure that they're leaning on in their time of need. Adamotto now hands it off. The defense there. Comes back out to Evans. He's short with the three. Oh, and that's a wonderful shot. Cool and calm for Lu Chunxian. Five points for him now alongside three rebounds and a steal. Two back-to-back -back big plays. Out of the races. Reverse layup. No good. Tang is following. Picks up his eighth rebound, takes his personal points to 11. Reduces Japan's lead to 14. The Chinese Taipei need to build this momentum. Foul's going to be called. That's a quick way to kill your momentum. As Fujiyuma will head to the line for three free throws. As the defense from Wu is a little overzealous. Chasing that one out a little too hard.
change will be made as Nishida heads to the bench alongside Sato and Evans. As Coach Hovas rings the changes four minutes into this third quarter. Chinese Taipei make the change as well as Tang heads out, Ling comes in. Yoshi comes in, Inoyu comes in, and Tomonaga is also back on the floor for Japan. Coach Chow running through some instructions for Tang. Although he's having a big game, you do need to remember just 22 years of age. There's still plenty of development to come. Fuji will head to the bench as well as Toz Kai comes in. And lead back to 17. After Fuji made all three free throws from the charity strike. Sideline ball for Chinese Taipei now. And we feel like this is an important phase of the game. The Chinese Taipei having to fight their way back in. Shot no good from Lu. And Lin Bin Cheng couldn't quite grab the rebound. And you feel that Chinese Taipei need to make some inroads before the end of the third quarter. They don't really want to need themselves a double-digit deficit to deal with in the third. Foul's going to get called down on Wu. As the little hesitation for Harimoto was enough to change the direction. Quick first step, forcing Wu Ping into the foul. He'll head to the bench. Third team foul of the quarter for Chinese Taipei. Third personal foul for Wu. Naga with a slightly wayward pass will put the shot up and draw the foul off UIG. And Tommy Naga will head to the free throw line for three free throws as well. And this has killed that little bit of momentum that Chinese Taipei had created with a couple of big plays. Quickly, the momentum shifts again. Back towards Japan. Minaga back at the line for two more free throws. It's the first two from these three. Chinese Taipei now in the penalty as well. Can he hit the third? He can, and with that, gives Japan a game-high 20-point lead. And as I'm saying, the next five minutes are a huge offensive foul. That's an easy call for Ui Che. Two silly plays back-to-back -back for him. He just drops the shoulder in Tommy Naga. I'm not even sure why he's looking frustrated. It was uh, an obvious play, and the officials pretty much saying, I'm not sure what you want. <laughs> that could have been more of an offensive foul if he tried. Three goes up, no good. Rebound by Lin Bin Sheng. Lin, mid-range jumper, gets it to go. And Lin has done his best throughout the game. Up to double digits now, 11 points, five from five from the field. That one's short. Tominaga tries to get the rebound for Japan, but the loose ball falls into the hands of Lu. And it's going to be called on Toz Kai. Line possession for Chinese Taipei as we see Sun head to the bench. Chen comes back in. The 
Lin. Hands it off. It's a good looking form, but didn't get it to go this time, Chan. Tommy Naga steps into the three. No good this time. The defense was good on that attempt, though. Good transition by Chinese Taipei. Poor finish, though, by Lin Bin Sheng. And uh, if Chinese Taipei are struggling in the half court, one way to solve that is get out and try and run transition hard, but the shot is good. The three from Inouye. And the timeout is going to be called. Japan 55, Chinese Taipei 34. Under four minutes left in the third quarter. I think you'd probably say that Japan have maybe half a foot into the second qualifying round at this stage. Let's listen to this Chinese Taipei huddle, hear what Coach Chow has to say. Japan have done a good job in this quarter, extended their lead slightly, but again, all they've done is really lock out Chinese Taipei on the defensive end, and that needs to be the trend now. Chinese Taipei just scoring seven points in the first six minutes of this quarter. On track for similar scoring rate as they have throughout the game, and you have to credit a good Japanese defense for that, as well as a slightly static Chinese Taipei offense. It's improved, I think, in the second half, but not consistently. Shot goes up from Lin. That's an air ball. And is received with gasps from the crowd here. He apologizes to his coach in the bench. Toes now for Japan. Almost stolen away, Tominaga. Shot clock at five, looking to shape up. The shot goes up, clips the front of the iron, long rebound, falls back to toes, steps his way through, lovely pass. Gonna come back out and use a bit more of the shot clock. Tommy Naga nearly from the logo. Off target though, Yoshi rebound. Another rebound and Japan's offensive rebound tally continues to grow. And Oyu, no good. Rebound eventually falls into the hands of Alou. I mean Chen. Lou now with possession back to Chen. Lin for three. And Chinese Taipei's woes offensively continue here in Melbourne. Tominaga, no good, did all the hard work, doesn't get the score though. Lou kicks it back out to Lin. Lin tries to thread the eye of the needle, but has it knocked away. Baseline ball for Chinese Taipei, a little over two minutes to play. Nagayoshi, plenty of smiles on the face as we see a treble change for Chinese Taipei, as Coach Chow really is throwing everything in the kitchen sink at this one. Tang, Chen and Lin come in, Lu Yu and Lin come out. Lin Bin Sheng is the player coming out and Lin Yanting is the player back into the game. Shot clock expiring, offensive foul is going to be called on Lin Yang Ting. Pretty easy one for the officials to call, just leans in as desperation set in with the shot clock expiring. Oh. 
12 minutes left on the game clock now. New Chinese Taipei have some superpowers that we haven't seen in qualification yet. And the shot is good. And oh, you. That's sorry, Suda hit that three. Out at the races, hands it off. Easy finish. On and oh, you. And the Japanese lead just extends further, 26 points now. Chinese Taipei have tried their hardest, an offensive foul call again on Lin Yang Ting. That's his second offensive foul in quick succession. He's going to head out of the game on the back of that two turnovers. As Yu comes back in for Chinese Taipei. One minute left here in the third quarter. In OU. Not the prettiest of shots. Kawamura throws it away though, and Chen Wu Wei picks it up. Chinese Taipei trying to create, but just offensively, they're fragmented. They're not running good structured basketball. Even then, just watching that transition, no one spreading, no one running lanes. They all ended up just clogging the paint together. Again, the same happens here. No spacing, making it easy for Japan to defend, limiting the amount of space that the Chinese Thai players have to work with to create the space they need to get good shots away. Point eight left for them to work with now as well, and they're going to fumble that one. Coach Hovas will be much happy with how his team have played today. They've looked much more of a unit, much more structured offensively in particular. Chinese Taipei, it really feels they're all at sea at the moment. And plenty of work for Coach Chow to do. If they are to lose today's game by six or more, that will obviously end their World Cup dreams. They'll have a game against China tomorrow, which they'll still want to take seriously because the Asia Cup is just over a week away. Out at the races, gets the score. Tang. Looked like he was going to throw it down, and that will be the end of the third quarter here in Melbourne. And another quarter dominated by Japan. And at the end of three, they lead this one 60 to 36 over Chinese Taipei. Here are the shooting percentages. Perfect from the free throw line for Japan. Shooting well from two. Could be better from three. But they won't be too phased because it's a defensive end. They're doing a great job of limiting Chinese Taipei just to nine points in that quarter. Here are some of the best plays of that third quarter. And surprisingly, the vast majority will be Japanese plays as they dominated that quarter, outscoring Chinese Taipei 18 to nine, as they take big steps towards progressing to the second qualification round. Chinese Taipei at the moment on the verge of elimination from the World Cup. Their chances of being at the World Cup next year are fading fast here in Melbourne. And if that is the case, then their attention will switch towards the Asia Cup which tips off in just over a week's time in Jakarta in Indonesia. I'm certainly looking forward to being courtside for that one. Should be a great tournament. There's plenty of superstars on show as they fight it out for the Asia Cup. But here in the qualifiers, Chinese Taipei still have 10 minutes to work with. But it's a big ask. They've left themselves a mountain to climb. They trail by 24. They're going to need to have a near-perfect quarter on both ends of the floor if they're going to come away with the win here. As we see Coach Hovas studying the box score as a professor of the game.
Ball inbounded. Final quarter of action underway here. FIBA World Cup qualifier between Japan and Chinese Taipei. At the three-quarter mark, it's Japan 60, Chinese Taipei 36 in this do-or-die game for Chinese Taipei. It looks like Japan have almost booked their spot in the second qualification round. They are 10 minutes away right now. They need to win the game, and that will be enough for them. Fast break, though, for Chinese Taipei. Good start to the final quarter for them. They only scored nine points in the third quarter. So to get on the scoreboard early will help. Adamoto now. Hands it off to Kawamura. Evans. Oh, soft left hand from the big man. Draws the contact, gets the score. We'll head to the free throw line for the bonus. Luke Evans having a big game today. That score takes his personal tally up to double digits. And he'll head to the line for the bonus. Rattles home the bonus shot as well. Japan's lead extends back out to 25. Just one shy of their biggest lead of the game. That one's short from Chen. Suda rails a three home. And Japan just look like they're in autopilot right now. They're kicking back, they're relaxing, they put cruise control on. And they're just playing some lovely basketball. Selfless team, offense, no pressure. And when Japan are in that phase, they are a phenomenal outfit. Good shot, though, from distance from Chen. Trying to keep those Chinese Taipei hopes alive. His first bucket of the game. There's the three from Suda. Didn't even make the net bulge, it was so accurate. Adamoto has it stripped away, but it's fouled. That one blown on Chan. Yeah, body contact and the arm from Chang. I think the officials could have called either one of those. That's the first of his two. Extends the lead back out to 26. Make that 27 now. And Hanamoto, the next Japanese player to be on double digits. 10.5 rebounds as we see Kawamura head to the bench. Back into the game. Comes Fuji. Sun now. Just to the corner, good spacing this time by Chinese Taipei. Creates that space, but it's an air ball as Suda picks up the loose ball rebound. Fuji now asking Evans to post up. Evans with a little shake. Shot goes up from outside, that's short. Rebound battle is only knocked out of bounds by Tang Wei Shea, so it will be Japanese ball on the baseline. And a fight for the possession, good hustle. As Tang gets away at the races, up to 15 points now. And he's just two rebounds shy of his double-double. Brings Chinese Taipei back to within 25. Fuji, nails the jumper. And this is the problem Chinese Taipei 
have right now as they throw the ball away. Another unforced error, really. This time it's Sun with the turnover. But for Chinese Taipei, they seem to get on slight runs, small little momentum shifts in their favor, and then just as they seem to try and wrestle a little bit of control away from Japan, Japan step up and hit a big shot, which closes things out. Harimoto comes up short. Into the hands of Chen. Chinese Taipei keep plugging away, keep working hard, trying to create. And to be honest with you, the second half, as much as they, they probably had their worst offensive quarter in the third quarter, at times they looked much better. They were playing as a team, they were spacing the floor, there was movement away from the ball to create space. They just didn't quite connect and get the points on the board. As we see Alou come back into the action. And Chen will take a seat on the bench. Sun now hands it off to the wing. Shot clock at four. Gets a shot away, but it's short of the rim, just flicks the net. Evans with the rebound. And Japan will just fall back into that structured offense, that spaced out offense. Good movement again. Shot goes up from Fuji. Doesn't get it to drop this time. Looked like he might have drawn some contact. Not enough from the official's perspective, though. That one's knocked away. And another turnover for Chinese Taipei. And they've looked a little bit out of sorts. Not had that team cohesion that you need at this level to come away with the win. Timeout's been called here in Melbourne on the back of Chinese Taipei's 18th turnover of the game. 5.52 left on the game clock. Chinese Taipei trail by 28. Let's listen to Coach Chow's huddle. Calm time out there from Coach Chow. As Tang picks up his double double, 15 points, 10 rebounds, as he uh, takes a seat on the bench. A big performance from him, just 22 years of age. Building on his 12.3 rebound performance against China last time out. Foul's going to get called on Lin Bing Sheng. Just locking up Fuji. Third team foul of the quarter for Chinese Taipei as Japan will make the changes. Inoyu comes in and Sato. Sorry, uh, Sato comes in and Inoyu heads to the bench. Evans looking to go to work. Oh my goodness me. That's just upper body strength and persistence there from Evans for that score. 13 points now for the big man. It's going to remain Chinese Taipei ball. Goes up from the wing, is short. Rebound over the backboard into the hands of Sato. Hey, hey, hey. 
Evans now hands it back out to Yoshi. Yoshi is fouled. Second time that Wu Ping has just been a little bit overzealous on the perimeter defense. Send Yoshi to the line for free throws. It's the first. Still has two to come. Plenty of smiles on the Japanese bench right now. Coach Hova still fully fixed on the game though. Yoshi hits the second of his two. Yoshi hits the third as well. Three from three from the line for Yoshi. Takes him unbelievably just to three points, his first of the game. Alongside three rebounds though, so certainly contributed. Foul's going to be called. That's an easy one on Yoshi. He's shocked by the call, but you don't have to use your hands to push someone. Bounces him over the halfway line with his chest. 33-point lead, game-high 33-point lead now for Japan. As they look to lock out, progression through to the second qualifying phase for the World Cup. Shots missed by... Chinese Taipei Evans with the rebound. Suda now slows it down. Low post to Evans, stolen away. Good help side defense there by Lu. Foul is going to be called on Sato. As Lin Bing Sheng hits the floor. over four minutes left to play and as I said for Chinese Taipei eyes will start moving towards tomorrow. <coughs> tomorrow's game against China as well as half an eye on Asia Cup which starts in a little over a week's time and Chinese Taipei feature in Group B at the Asia Cup where they'll take on China, Korea and Bahrain. Their first game is on Tuesday the 12th of July as they take on Bahrain. Yu <laughs> looks to go baseline, kicks it to the corner. Shots no good, another rebound dragged down by Nagayoshi. Nagayoshi with his third rebound of the game. As we see, you know, you hit the three, but he'd already stepped out of bounds. This game is slightly transferring from a, a competition to fight for that progression of the second qualifying round into maybe a slightly different phase now with both teams looking ahead of this game to a certain degree for Japan. This is their final game of the first qualification round, so their next game will be at Asia Cup in Jakarta in a little over a week's time. All Chinese Taipei. China tomorrow provides them with uh, another big game as they prepare for Asia Cup as well. They'll face China actually in the group stages of the Asia Cup. In OU, nails the three this time, doesn't step out of bounds. And Japan continue to extend their lead. It's at 36, as there's under three minutes to play. And no you, the next Japanese player out to double digits. And the Chinese Taipei can, didn't continue to struggle with their jumper. Shooting under 31% from the field. Always going to be difficult to win games at this level of competition with that percentage. Suda. Puts the three up, can't get it to go, and Sun grabs the rebound. Oh, 
Good hustle to keep the ball in bounds. Toes now slides inside, gets the score. Draws the foul. Toes Kai. Well, head to the free throw line for the bonus. It was the crossover that created the space. And the wingspan that drew the foul from Sun Zhu Yao. Fouls now at the line for the free throws. And one of the young players, just 23 years of age, fouls going to be called. I think this time on Rui Ping. As Inouye is a handful in the paint. And too much of a handful. Or Wu. You know, you all head to the free throw line. And a timeout will be called by Chinese Taipei now. A little over two minutes to play here. Coach Chow using this as an opportunity to prepare, to fine tune, change things up. Oh, 没机会再做反挡再直接走掉去对两个要做穿边这个挡的是个假的下挡才真的最后防守要做出来了接下来Might be a done deal here in Melbourne as we hear the uh, dramatic music in the arena. As Japan are at the free throw line. DJ a little bit slow to turn the music off, but does eventually, but a bit late for Inou to miss his first free throw. Back at the line for his second, though. Rattles home the second, up to 13 points alongside six rebounds for so, uh, Inoyu Soichiro. And Chinese Taipei uh, not going to go quietly. Oh, what a pass! Beautiful vision from Yuichi. Hands it off to Sun Zhu Yao for the score. Pose now. A quick ball movement here from Japan. And now you look good in this fourth quarter, but misses that one. We're into the final 90 seconds of the game. As Japan have absolutely got a job done here. And that's the way they would have looked at the game coming into it. Turns out they've won in style. They've played some good basketball, but the first order of business was just get the win. It was Surely that simple a demand from Coach Hovas and his coaching staff. Just go out and get the win. If it has to be an ugly game, it has to be an ugly game. It turns out it doesn't have to be an ugly game. And Japan have done a good job as we see Tang called for the foul and Yoshi will head to the line. It's the first of his two to go. As, a, uh, as you would expect, calm Japanese bench looks on. And the second is good as well. 5.6 rebounds for Hirotaki, uh, sorry, for Yoshi Hirotaka. You now punch it back. Oh, lovely pass. And this is much better play from Chinese Taipei. Don't get me wrong. Japanese defense isn't quite at the intense level it was earlier in the game. But this is the type of offense Chinese Taipei need to play. Much more team-focused, a lot more dynamism in their play. Will certainly help create 
opportunities like the one they had in that last possession. Shot is up and good. Chinese Taipei dropping into a 2-3 zone is giving space to the likes of Yoshi to hit the triple. He's certainly making hay while the sun is shining. Kawanamura takes his assist tally to seven now. Lin hands it off to you. Lu short with the three. Rebound brought down by Nagayoshi. Kawamura inside. Kawamura's eight assists now. One of the prime recipients of those passes has been Inoyu Soichiro. Breakaway layup is easy for Lin Bin Chen. And that will be the last action of the game here in Melbourne. An impressive performance from the Japanese team. And coach Hobas will be content with the result. It's Japan 89, Chinese Taipei 49. Great performance from the Japanese team. They came in with a job to do, they got it done. The Chinese Taipei, that signals the end to their World Cup ambitions. That loss forces them out of this qualification. That moves them on to an 0-5 record. They've got one more game left though, as they take on China tomorrow for Japan. That moves them on to a 2-4 record. That ends that first round of qualifiers. They secure the third progression spot to the second qualifier. Smiles on the face of Coach Hobas. And the three teams moving forward from Group B are Australia, China, and Japan. Here are the shooting percentages. Japan near perfect from the free throw line. 71% from two. And Chinese Taipei certainly struggled in today's game. Japan dominating the boards as well. Really putting in a big performance, including 14 offensive rebounds. Top scorer Tomonagi with 17. Enoyu with 14. Evans with 13. And Tang led the way for Chinese Taipei with 15 points. Here were some of the best plays from that second half of action. And what a big game we've had here in Melbourne. Everything was on the line in this game. Both these teams looking to keep their chances of progressing to the second qualification round alive. Obviously for Japan, not so much pressure. They already have their spot at the World Cup secured as one of the host nations. However, for Chinese Taipei, it was do or die. And unfortunately for them, this loss here today means that they are now no more chance of qualifying for the World Cup. However, for Japan, they will move forward through to the second qualification round. And in that second qualification round, they will take on Kazakhstan, Iran, and either, well, one of either Syria or Bahrain. But it's been a, a hell of a fight here today. Some big performances from Japan, putting on a real team performance. Nakamura there. He put in a, a great job. Dishing out eight assists without scoring a point himself. But four players in double digits. Tomonagi had 17. Inoyu had 14. Evans with 13. Haramoto with 13. As for Chinese Taipei, just two players in double digits. They had glimmers of what they could do, Chinese Taipei but weren't able to put enough of a run, enough consistency in the game to come away with the win. Tang is their star of the day. He uh, notches up a double-double, 15 points and 10 rebounds. And then Lin Bin Shen also had 13 points and four rebounds. As I say, Chinese Taipei now will play on uh, tomorrow against China to finish off this first round of qualifiers, but for Chinese Taipei, their mind will already be moving across to the Asia Cup. That uh, tips off in a little over a week's time. Their first game within the Asia Cup will be on Tuesday the 12th, as they take on Bahrain. 
in Jakarta in Indonesia. But what a game we've had here. Both teams putting in big performances. And Japan showing once they get some consistency, once they get that teamwork rolling on the offensive end, exactly what they can do, putting in a big performance here today. Here's the table as it stands at the moment. Australia 5-0. and oh. China 4 uh, sorry, 3-1. and one. Japan finish off with a 2-4 record in this first stage. Chinese Taipei 0-5. Oh, Australia, China to come after this one. But the game we've had here has been a show of Japanese strength in world basketball. They've won this one against Chinese Taipei. Booked their place in the second qualification round for the World Cup. It's Japan 89, Chinese Taipei 49.